Hey, how's it going everyone? Well, right now some of you may be thinking, wow, seriously, like you're making another video about Capture One? Didn't you just make a video about Capture One last week? And the answer is yeah, I mean, I did. But the reason I'm making a second video is because the video I made last week, I had originally intended to just be a single video, encompassing both the topic from that video and the topic of this one. But I discovered when I started making that video from last week that you know not only did the topics just not work together particularly well, but it was also just way too long. It was way too much content for a single video. So I decided to break it up into two separate videos, and that's why you're seeing another one about Capture One. But for this video today, what I want to focus on are unique features. Some of the things that um, the you know the product designers and engineers at Capture One came up with to make Capture One a very different and in some ways superior photo processing uh, application, in my opinion, than uh, Adobe Lightroom, which for all intents and purposes really hasn't changed all that much since uh, you know the early days of the product. Um, so that's what uh, today is going to be about. I'm going to be sharing a bunch of unique features and uh, so you can be learning more about Capture One. Without further ado, let's get into unique feature number one, and that is the ability to edit multiple images simultaneously. All right, so here in Capture One, this main area that you see here, this large scrollable area, this is called the viewer. Now, the viewer has three modes. It has a grid mode, it has a primary mode, and then it has a multi-view mode. And the mode you're looking at right now, this is the grid mode, which is pretty similar to the library view in uh, Lightroom. If you uh, double click on an image, then that image opens in the primary mode. And this probably looks uh, a lot like the developed view in Lightroom. But here is where it gets really interesting, is the fact that you can come out here to the grid view and then command or control click on another image double click, and then those images are displayed side by side. Now, if you don't see images displayed side by side, you probably don't have multi-view mode enabled. To enable it, you come up here to view, go to customize viewer, and make sure that multi-view mode here is checked. Now, on the surface at least, this looks a lot like the reference view in Lightroom, which is where Lightroom, you can select uh, a reference image, and then that image is displayed next to the one that you are editing, so that you can visually reference the other image while you are making adjustments to the one that you are editing. And yeah, it looks that way, but it actually goes much further than that. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So right now, this image over here on the left is selected, the one of this tree here. And you can see the tools over here on the right. These are the settings that have been applied to it. Well, I can then select this image on the right here, and as you can see, the tools update. These are the settings that have been applied to this image. And by the way, it's not just limited to two images. I can come out here, command control, click on another image, and then I have three images side by side. And I can click between all three and see the settings which have been applied to each image. For me, this is amazing because one of the things that's always driven me crazy about the reference view in Lightroom is the fact that, I mean, a reference image isn't just a, a visual reference, it's also a technical reference, or at least that's how my brain works. Because not only do I want to see what the image uh, looks like when I'm referencing it and making adjustments, but I want to know what settings have been applied to that image. And you need to go into that image in order to see what the settings are. Well, in Lightroom, there's really not an easy way to do that other than selecting that reference and making it the one that you're editing and then having to go back. And it's just so much more cumbersome than how Capture One works. Because not only can you visually reference another image, you can just click on it and you're able to see what settings have been applied to it instead of doing it you know, in isolation, where you're just in, in Lightroom, where you're just developing one image, and then you open another, and then you open another, and by the time you get to the third or fourth image, you may have forgotten what it was you did to the to the first image, and then you go back and look at it later, and you're like, ah, uh, images don't look anything alike. Now I have to go back and make some fine, you know, some adjustments to it and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I just love being able to edit multiple images simultaneously in a single view. 
Well, it looks like my cat Luna has decided to uh, to join us. I kind of feel like uh, feel like Philip Bloom right now or something. Okay, unique feature number two is the ability. She's shedding. It's summer. Um, unique feature number two is the ability to view uh, your crop data and your rotation data in the grid view. You may have noticed before when I was scrolling this grid view in the viewer that with each one of the images, there is this, you know, kind of like semi-transparent band that goes around some of the images here. Well, what it's displaying is it's displaying both the original raw file and then the cropped or rotated version of that file on top. Then if you are looking at a series of images and all of them are say of the same subject matter, you're able to see in the grid view without having to open each one, which one has been cropped, which one has been rotated because sometimes, um, you know, crops can be, you know, rather severe and it's something where you're able to, you know, identify both at the same time. So obviously she hears something right now. So it's just one of those small, but I think just really clever features that makes uh, Capture One different because you can't see this information in Lightroom without actually going into the develop view for it. Okay, unique feature number three is the focus mask. Now, if you are accustomed to focus peaking on a camera, which is where uh, the camera displays, looks like she decided to leave and leave me with a bunch of hair. Um, so yeah, so focus peaking. So focus peaking is something where the camera uh, shows you on the back of its uh, screen which areas of an image are sharpest, which areas of the image are in focus by painting uh, like some kind of highlight color on top of them. Well, Capture One does it, um, you know, in a very similar way, and I'll and I'll show you how it works. So here in the grid view, if you uh, come up here to view and then select focus mask. It'll take a couple of seconds for it to, um, to kick in, depending on the speed of your machine. But eventually you will notice this green highlight over your images. And I'll open one in the primary view here. Now, the usefulness of this feature really kind of depends on your subject and also what settings you used for, uh, for aperture, because the, the greater your depth of field, like if you're shooting at something like F16, F22, something like that, then uh, a lot of your image is going to be green because you know you were able to get uh, a, a fair amount of the image to be reasonably sharp because of that deep depth of field. But where it's more useful is when shooting with a shallow depth of field at a larger aperture, like I believe uh, this image was. Yeah, so this was shot at f4, and I mean as you can see, you know the boat here is being painted green. Some of the grass down here is being painted green and it's all within probably, I don't know, this is all probably within like eight feet, um, you know, from the subject, like, you know, probably like four feet back and four feet to the front. So all of it is being painted this color of green. And where this comes in, in handy is, you know, if you are viewing a bunch of different images in the grid view and perhaps you've been doing some focus stacking where you focused on the foreground, the midground, and the background and you're not quite sure which, Im which image is which, um, the focus mask will show you that. Also, if you happen to be doing something like uh, product photography or portrait work or something like that where, you know, where nailing your focus and getting it, you know, at just the right sharpness is important, then focus mask will show you which ones you nailed the focus on and which one has it right where it needs to be and which ones uh, are not, so, which makes culling images, I think, a lot easier. Now, one of the things you can do with focus mask is you can actually adjust its threshold uh, in other settings as well. You just go to the, uh, the uh, app preferences here, click on focus, and you'll see threshold. Basically, the way it works is, you know, the higher the threshold, the more sensitive it is and the more uh, picky it is, for lack of a better word. And uh, the lower it goes, if you drop it all the way down, then it just gets really loose. So somewhere around the default settings, I think are, you know, which is 250 is about right. All right, so um, unique feature number four, I'm still getting cat hair off my laptop here. Uh, unique feature number four is the uh, customizable interface of Capture One. If you like to have, if you if there's particular tools that you find yourself using a lot, you can come up here, right click on the top of the app, and then you can drag in whatever tool it is that you like to use. And you can also align it wherever you want within the toolbar. 
Um, additionally, you may notice here that my uh, tools are on the right side of the interface. Now, by default, this is actually on the left, and I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about. So, um, so when you first install Capture One, by default, the tools are actually on the left side. Well, because I'm a Lightroom, like a legacy Lightroom user, I like for them to be on the right. It just feels weird to have them on the left for some reason to me. Well, thankfully, Capture One built in the ability to move them. So if you want them on the right as well, you can come up here to View, go to Customize Tools, and then select Place Right, and they'll flip over to the right side. Now, the other thing you can do with this tool panel over here is move the tools into these tabs up here into whatever order you want. So just hold down Command or Control on your keyboard, and you can move these around into whatever position works for you. But then the best part, uh, and the part that I've been actually using quite a lot, is the ability to move tools between panels. So if there's a particular tool that you know you want to use, you want it to be in more than one panel, or you just you just feel like it should be part of another one, you can, let me just do this for example, you could drag a tool out. This is the exposure tool. I could click over here on the color, uh, tool and then drag this panel in and it snaps into place. I can also drag this up into this sticky kind of like non-scrollable area up here to make it persistent, uh, you know, within the panel, you know, whenever it is that uh, I'm scrolling it, it wouldn't move then. All right, let's continue on with unique feature number five and that is the copy adjustments clipboard. Now in Capture One, you can copy the settings of one photo and paste them onto another, just like you can in Adobe Lightroom. But the way in which Capture One does it is actually the reverse of how Lightroom does it, and I think it's actually better, and I'll explain to you why. So in Lightroom, when you copy the settings of one image, you're presented with this modal where you are asked to choose which settings you want to copy to the clipboard. Then you click OK, everything is put on your clipboard, and then you're able to paste those settings onto another image. Well, Capture One does it uh, the reverse of that, and I'll show you how it works. So let me just open a couple of images here in the uh, multi-view mode. I think these were taken literally uh, seconds apart, um, but you'll get the idea. So I have this image on the right here selected. I'll click Copy in the top right-hand corner. And then I can come over here to the image on the left and I can click apply. And if I click apply, then everything from the clipboard is uh, that was a non-default value in the first image is uh, applied to this image. But there's actually a way for you to do it with a little more control than that. What you can do instead of clicking apply is click on this little clipboard icon up here at the top of the uh, tool panel. Looks like it's called adjustments. And then down here at the bottom, you will see the Adjustments Clipboard Tool. Now, anything that has an orange check next to it, that is um, a value, or rather a, a setting in the first image, which has a non-default value. It's a, it's a setting that I actually went in and, and made some kind of change to. So what this allows you to do then is, you know, let's say I look at this and I think, well, I definitely don't want any of the, the layers from the first image. I can turn off all the layers. I can turn off, uh, let's say, uh, sharpness. Maybe I don't want the lens profile or the chromatic aberration. Whatever it is, I can go in and I can fine tune the clipboard and then click the apply button down here. And then that adjusted edited version of the clipboard is then applied to my photo. Now, the reason I think that is better is because in, in, you know, in, in practical use, when, whenever I have used copy and paste, there's always been like some kind of hero image, like one that has you know, kind of like the general look and feel that I want. I will copy the settings of it, and then when I start pasting it to other images, I'll notice that it doesn't work with those. Sometimes you know, not all of those settings work with the other images because you know, maybe they're overexposed or underexposed, or maybe their white balances were different. Maybe there's just something about them, or just maybe even a completely different subject where the, the copied settings just don't quite work. And there's usually like something, there's usually like some value that I copy that's just totally screwing up the paste. So then in Lightroom, I would have to go back to that hero image, copy it, 
reselect which ones I want, then go back and paste it again on like a case by case basis. Whereas in Capture One, I can copy some settings and then I can paste them across a series of images while making fine tune adjustments along the way with each one. Hope that makes sense. But I mean, for me, I think, you know, copying and pasting uh, of settings in Capture One, you just have a lot more control. And I think it, it resembles more closely the way uh, people actually copy and paste their settings than how Lightroom does it. All right, the next unique feature are the color wheels. Now, color editing in Capture One is, in my opinion, just um, so much more precise and you have so much more control over it than, uh, than what you have in Lightroom. And if you happen to do any video editing work, like in Premiere or Final Cut or DaVinci, uh, resolve then you know the color wheel approach of capture one will probably feel right at home to you you'll see them here in the color balance uh, panel this is you know the shadow wheel this is the mid-tone wheel and this is the highlight wheel here and this is essentially where you're able to do split toning effects you know as you know you would in Lightroom but in Lightroom you have to use horizontal sliders in order to do this whereas if you're using a wheel, you're able to see and understand the relationship between colors. So for example, let's say that uh, this isn't really a good image to be uh, experimenting with of this. Let's do this one instead. So like for this one, I could say, okay, I wanna warm up the highlights. So I'm going to drag you know, this up into the kind of like a yellowy orange kind of look. And I want my shadows to be the opposite of that. I want to create a color complement within the image. Well, I can just take this shadow wheel and push it in the opposite direction of where highlight is. The opposite complementary color on the wheel, which creates that kind of color harmony you're looking for. If you're interested to check out more unique features that are in Capture One, but not in Lightroom, uh, I actually made a part one to this video uh, a few months ago, which at this point, considering everything that's going on in the world feels like an eternity ago. But if you'd like to check that out, I will put up here on the screen the topics that I covered in that video, and I will link to it up here if you would like to jump over and check that video out after this one. If you'd like to download a trial of Capture One and check it out for yourself, a link to Capture One is below in the video description. It leads you over to a uh, Mac and Windows download page 30 days, you can use it totally free, no credit card required. Just download it, install it, check it out, kick the tires, and see what you think. And you know, try, uh, try out some of these tools, try editing some of those old raw images. If you're stuck indoors and you're not able to get out and really create anything new, I think this is a great opportunity to be trying out some different tools, trying out some different ways of approaching your photography, and, uh, and seeing what, what comes about as a result. If you learned something from this video or if you just enjoyed it in general, I would appreciate it if you would give the video a thumbs up. And if you would like to keep in touch in the future and uh, be notified of more videos about uh, photography, photo uh, editing, and product reviews as well, uh, remember to also subscribe to my channel. That's it, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate your time and attention. I'll see you next time.